call the meeting to order. It's 6.15. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, we have a long meeting tonight, but it should be fun, and we will keep a long, <laughs> we will keep a good pace. Uh, I was going to share with you guys that I, I, I always try to share something that inspired me or something that happened, and we haven't seen each other in a while. And I went on Sunday to the concert for Ukraine. You know, it's been 14 months since it first started. And one of the con the conductor, you know, the composer for one of the pieces that they were singing, moved to Burlington. Michael, I can't say his last name. Schultzer composed a piece. That's the that the name of the piece. It was at times I wonder. And then he went on to describe how when he was writing the piece, it's every time he writes a piece, he says, at times I wonder, because he wonders every time it's a little different, you know, every time, depending the people are playing, depending the, the orchestra, depending the context of the time, or in this case, they were playing for, it's a, it's a fundraiser for, for Ukraine, and it was 100 people, so 50 from Burlington and 50 from, from here, all playing together. So. Mm -hmm. In some ways, in the, it, you know, I know that we are not an orchestra or a choral group, but I feel similarly at times. At times, I wonder what we'll do with our time together as a board. Every every time, you know, I get excited. I don't know that everybody gets excited about for me, but it, how do we call people in? It, how do our share understandings and responsibilities and our share humanities help us with our duty? You know, it, and how do we model tonight? and continue to leverage public education as the pillar of our democracy, but also how the board leadership matters and how we share the space with our students, with our administrators, with our community members. So tonight, I was not sure how many people we were gonna get. We don't have that many people on the, on the Zoom call, but just a reminder to be present here with you, with however you're feeling today, just be present as yourself, speak for yourself, lean into and learn from the discomfort, uh, listen to understand and make space for everyone. There are a lot of people here tonight. So with that, let's get started with our meeting. So any adjustments to the agenda? A reception of guests. So we want to welcome our guests tonight. We have a group of students with us tonight and we have some members of the public with us tonight. We'll take time to do introductions uh, when we get into the student report. Uh, any public comments today from people in the audience? Anybody in Zoom that have any public comments before we get started? Seeing none? Okay, Mark, do you see? I don't see any hands. I do not see anyone. Okay. Okay, so let's start uh, with our student report. So, Megan, do you want to take on and introduce our students? Yep, I can kind of kick us off. Um, so, uh, we're excited to be here. We have two of our four team members here today. So, um, Cal Boyd and Maya Gould couldn't make it, um, although if they pop on the screen, we will welcome them to come and join. Um, but I thought uh, I won't introduce Kai and Amelia, I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, but I was going to just tell us, uh, tell the board a little bit about the process, the conversations we've had, they will share more. Um, but we knew that we were coming to you to give you information as a board um, because our policy requires it and because we want to have this conversation and share it with you. Um, so uh, we started, Steve and I went to student council who decided that they wanted to um, identify some volunteers from student council to help us design what the review should cover. Um, and so two of that four are here. So I'm gonna have them introduce themselves. You've had a chance to review the report. They are gonna highlight some things, um, share their perspective with you, and then would sort of welcome a conversation. So, Amelia, you wanna start? And then we'll... Sure. Um, my name is Amelia Garland. I'm in eighth grade, and um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a representative, well, not representative, well, you know. I'm from East Montpelier. That's not what I meant, but like, you know. <laughs> Awesome. Kai, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. I'm Kai. Um, I use they, them. And I'm also an eighth grade representative. I'm from West Berlin, though, from Berlin Elementary, coming to you there, too. And yeah. So I will let you all highlight. I, I, I 
what you have read in the report, and I don't want to repeat it for you, is we looked at two main things. One is it was important to look at the historical associations with our mascot um, and look back. And so they will share a little bit about what they did to do that. But it was also important for us to start to gather some information about what people think now about our mascot. So I'm looking, Kai, you can't see me look at you. I'm looking at both of you. Let's jump to you. Who wants to start? Amelia, would you like to go first? Sure. So to start this process, as many of you know, I'm pretty sure we got the letter. I'm, I'm not completely sure who it was from. But we got this letter. It's like, hey, your mascot's not cool. We don't think it's cool. Can you like look into this? Maybe you can change it. And we we're like, sure. So we did all the research, the backstory, and we found there was nothing really wrong with it. So, um, uh, yeah. So we did multiple things. We sent out a um, Google Forms. Nope. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a survey. A survey to the students, we're like, what do you think about the mascot? And the general census we got from that was, there's not a problem, but it could be cooler. <laughs> so most of the people who thought it should be changed thought it should be changed to be cooler versus it actually being like offensive to anybody. And yeah. if I may add to that, we were specifically looking at who was making the complaints that it was offensive because we were looking to see if it were coming from actual indigenous people, or if it were coming from like white organizations and people who weren't indigenous and weren't directly affected by mascots of racial caricatures or things that are rooted in racism. And we took the time to look at that and we found out that there were two groups, if I'm not mistaken, making complaints about the mascots. Um, and that's why we got the big scary little envelope mail. Um, and one of them was indigenous led and the other one was not. So we looked at that and we looked into the two groups who were sending in complaints about the mascot. And so when one of the questions that I'll sort of um, pose to the two of you, because this is one of the conversations we've had a lot. So we've met several times, both to, uh, first we met to look at the historical back, like looking back in the mascot. That part is pretty clear. Um, the Raiders mascot started out as the Raiders name. It didn't have an image associated with it at first. And then the image was designed for the school by the yearbook company, actually, um, in the 70s. Um, so, and, and the group did a pretty good search of yearbooks and newspaper articles, because sometimes you see images, even though they're not the official ones, you, would, you might see them on posters in the background. And I think the group feels pretty strongly that they didn't unearth any indigenous imagery associated with it. Um, but in the survey, they sort of asked two questions. They asked, um, what do you feel? So, and I'm gonna read the question actually. Are, am I worried about how the Raider mascot represents U32? Um, and do I think we should explore a change? Mm -hmm. And you can see in the report the data associated with that. So I think both Kai and Amelia highlighted that. But we had really good conversations about the comments because there were some themes. And the themes around um, what, whether or not, like what does the mascot mean to individuals were a whole lot of neutral responses. In other words, the mascot itself is not super meaningful to us. That was, that was the biggest theme in the comments. Um, and then the second and the third, which were kind of similar, were tradition, um, they associate it with the school, um, and a lot of associations surround it strong. But then there was a smaller number, but a pretty powerful group of comments that talked about it kind of represents war and brutality and um, and really thoughtful comments about, is that how we want to be represented? Um, then we asked some questions around what do you think of when you think of the Raider? And the biggest number, like think about the Knight or U32 because that's what they're used to associating it with. But there was a pretty big group, a bigger group in that question, who that violent sort of raiding, pillaging, 
that's what they, um, that's the connotation. So then I'll stop talking, but we as a student group, I think the students had some good conversations about what does that mean? There's not a lot of um, uh, strong feeling like, yes, we think we should change, but there were a lot of comments around, is this how we want to be represented? So I don't know if you would add to that or expand or. Um, just one quick comment. There were also an overwhelming majority of students, at least in my grade, me and Amelia's grade, who didn't even know what the Raider was supposed to represent mm -hmm. because they initially thought that it was just a night and they also didn't necessarily care about what it represented. They were just like, oh, well, it's a night. We don't really use our mascot anyway, so it shouldn't have this big impact. And that's the feedback that we got from our grade. I personally asked some people about what they thought mm -hmm. and that's what I got as a response. And I think that that is also the overwhelming majority of people in the school not really knowing what the history of a Raider is and also seeing the night and not associating it with the Raiders necessarily. Yeah, I was talking with some seventh graders as well and they were like, we have a mascot. I just thought it was the year. Seventh graders. That might be a problem. <laughs> So I'm going to also put Willow on the spot a little bit, only because both Maya and, and Cal were our high school reps on this group, and they couldn't be here. So I don't know if there's anything that you would want to throw out, and then I would actually then we'll invite the board to ask questions. I mean, I think I would agree with both of the representatives here. A lot of kids just don't really care and don't really know that we have a mascot because a lot of our logos now on our sports uniforms are U's, not really a knight. So we've definitely like evolved from that logo. I mean, when we order things like sweatshirts or like long sleeves, there's a huge U on it. Mm -hmm. So I think the knight itself is kind of vintage at this point <laughs> but we do call ourselves the Raiders so there is that crossover as well four members questions we're, we're gonna debrief as part of our board operations next steps but right now you're welcome to uh, ask any questions yeah. from the process or any other questions that you might have from our students yeah, so one, one thing I noticed was a statement around, you know, not worried about the mascot and then what you were sharing about kind of a sense of not really, um, you know, not being fairly neutral about it. But then there seemed to be this strong feeling about not exploring a change. Did you get any sense from that as to why people felt so strongly about not exploring? Um, I think that people felt like that's a lot of work and I don't really want to be involved in that. And I don't think that most students would know how exactly that would work. Mm -hmm. So they're just trying to stay away from things that they don't really know much about. Mm -hmm. So was there any sense that we even needed a mascot? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, I don't know, the, you know, I'm not actually sure the purpose of a mascot. I can know the purpose of a name um, for that it identifies a a group of people, but a mascot itself, like all our our uh, ground schools have animals, like a, you know, a They're safe. wild cats or something like that, and I, I just, I'm not sure that it's so representative, or you, you want students to be embodied by, you know, a wild cat or whatever other the names are, so I'm not, I'm not sure the value of a mascot in itself. The name is something different, but the mascot, I'm not clear on it. I mean, take them on Pillier. They're the Solons, but that's the name of like a professor, they say. Well, so the legislator. Their, their yeah. thing I is an owl. Right, right. I mean, you can have plenty of words that would be exemplifying, you know, what we hope for our students. Um, a lot of them are animal based stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, Related to that, Chris, there were, because obviously we didn't reproduce all the comments in here, but there was a comment about um, 
wouldn't it be cool to have something you could dress up as and go to a game? <laughs> right. Like, well, That's what they're for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a comment. Okay. Um, so I guess I was not in my head distinguishing the name from the mascot. It, in looking, in, in doing this, were we specifically looking at the imagery or the name or both? Um, I think that I think that we were specifically looking at the name the Raiders because I think that most people don't see anything wrong with a knight, but the Raiders, um, the name of it comes from a mascot called the Red Raiders, which is an offensive depiction of Native Americans and really stereotypes Native Americans and indigenous people. So I think that we were more concerned about that than we were about the imagery of a knight. Because I don't think a lot of people were getting offended about a knight. I think that we wanted to look more about the name and look at the origins of the name and the history. And yeah, I think that's what we were more aiming to look at than the actual depiction of a knight as our mascot. Yeah, and I think we had a lot of also, you know, additional comments that were about that part of it, where we sort of, there's an acknowledgement that there isn't an image associated with the word raider that, that is discriminatory at face value anyway, but that the word itself. Um, and I guess my response to your question would be the role I see as having the name portion would be to create some sense of community, you know, we're the raiders. The U32ers sounds weird. Well, <laughs> so, I don't, whether or not we keep the Raiders, I think there's value to having a name that we call our community and that you can shout it. So, we have, so I'm part of Pep Squad, and Peter Chaffee and I normally do cheers. And mine's normally the Raiders, and give me an R, and like, et cetera. But we also say Roll Union, and that has become a very <laughs> popular chant mm. that we've done as well. So we're definitely getting mm. a balance of it, but yeah, I agree. Uh, a couple of questions for, for Kai. You mentioned the name had its origin in the Red Raiders. Is that our name or is that Rutland? No, that is Rutland's name, but what I was bringing up is that although we are not the Red Raiders, I think that that's probably where our name maybe came from was the Raiders, but we might have stopped and taken it aback and said, oh, well, we don't want to be the Red Raiders. That's obviously not the best look for our school. It's not what we want to represent as a school. So I think that that could be a possibility, or it could also be a possibility that we just heard the name Raiders and we were like, oh, yeah, we're the Raiders, dude. That's pretty cool. I honestly couldn't tell you which one was more profitable to happen. I can't speak right now, but that's what I think. Um, did you guys take a look at the, the policy? And if you did, do you believe that we're in compliance with the policy? Um, I don't think we took a look at the policy, did we? We did at the beginning. Um, and oh, yeah. I, yeah, and what I would say is we felt it was important for this group to inform the board and give as much information as possible um, as opposed to necessarily coming out with a recommendation about alignment but what I would say is that um, and I think kind of Kai this is related to what you were saying um, the mascot itself the image itself I would say this is now me talking is in compliance because the imagery is not discriminatory. But the thoughtful questions that came out of our conversation is, if if you didn't know it was a knight and you only are, hear the word raider, what are people associating with that word, even if it's not what the actual intention was? Mm -hmm. And that might be worth a conversation about whether that's in compliance. See what I'm saying? Yep, uh, just a couple more quick questions. Yeah. Chris, do you know the, the Doty mascot? Because no one's ever been able to tell me. I should ask you guys too. They don't have one anymore. See, I thought it was still there. <laughs> <laughs> we were the Worcester Warriors. And they're not anymore. 
they're no longer the Warriors. Okay. Now it's just Dodie. Because I actually asked if I was like, it's Dodie Warriors, but they just yeah, took Gilly out. Yeah, couldn't tell me. Yeah, they took out. There's no mascot. Dodie. Okay. I mean, Rosemary thinks yeah. they're the Warriors. Um, <laughs> and and for, for, for the student uh, members of, of, of the group, is it fair to say that there are not really strong feelings among this general student body about the name the Raiders? Yes, I think that's a very fair statement. I agree. Raiders people seem to not really care out of the 170-ish people, out of 700 people that responded to our survey. They're like, you know what? It's our mascot. Never really thought about it. I don't really care that much. Thank you. Just to be clear, did we hear, did you hear from any voices that thought it was definitively harmful or problematic? Sort of. Right, it was not to themselves, but an acknowledgement that other people may feel harm yeah. and concern yeah. about that, right? But um, in terms of like, I feel harmed, there weren't comments saying that, but there were definitely comments that said, but I worry about how okay. someone else might feel. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for our students? Great work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also just add to later, as the board has conversation about what they might need, um, I would be happy to bring, if there are more questions the board has for the group, um, we can circle back around to, to them. And you all are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, and you also don't have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we'll do a little more talking and then and Megan with a message. Yes. If you don't, if you don't, want to stay. you're welcome to stay and be part of the, of the meeting. But we're not done with the conversation mm -hmm. for tonight. Mm -hmm. Run while you can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you for coming. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go too, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks, Kai. I do have to share that. In my high school, we were the criminals. Oh. I still are. <laughs> and I never realized that was a problem until recently. But B32 doesn't even have a name. You were the criminals. Still, we were the scorpions. Wow. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And then just was a joke. <laughs> Might yeah. explain. My undergrad is a clam. Oh, oh. gooey ducks. Okay. Yeah. Before we get too yeah. carried away. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> clam. Yeah. Suck it up. It's Olympia. It's coastal Washington. Oh, it's like completely appropriate. Okay. Let's yeah. uh, so go gooey ducks. So we're going to get <laughs> to the next part of our agenda before we derail. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have a pre presentation and discussion with winter assessment results. Before, and you might have said this, I missed it. Are we, now that the students have presented, are we going to hear from the group? I mean, I know they wrote the letter saying there were certain people who did not want to come and speak because it created additional harm for them. But are we, is anybody going to come and speak to us, or was the letter it, and now we're making a decision based on the letter? Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to address it now, or I'm happy to make it part of our corporations, but oh, since okay. you have Sorry. the question right now, I could just say oh, okay. the, the group is not coming back to us. The, okay. the letter is completely null at this, at this point. They're working directly with the legislature. So we, we don't have any obligation to respond to the letter, but we do have an obligation, I feel, from what we've heard, mm -hmm. to have a clear process of what we're doing as, as, okay. as us, right? Okay. So regardless, it was a good conversation to have, and we had to do it anyways because we had the policy. Mm -hmm. So the, the report didn't come now just because we got the letter. That I know that's also something to make clear. We didn't respond <laughs> to the letter. We were already engaged because of the policy we had asked our superintendent to <coughs> engage in that process. Well, and we did we letter. did respond yes. to the yeah. letter. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 but we, we responded yeah. with a letter to the letter, but it's not the only reason we did this. Mm -hmm. right. no. Oh, 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 right. yes. So, yeah. so they, by sending the they initiated a complaint, and we yes. should respond to the complaint and either invite them to a hearing um, or ask them to withdraw the letter. Um, we, otherwise, it's just. But let's let's do that at our next okay. part of in board operations. So that's okay. And then moving to this. Okay with it. Mark, do you want to pop the slide up?
Are you going to kick it up? I guess I can kick awesome. it up. <laughs> I'm jumping in in my role as the chair of ed quality. So Jen's going to walk us through a report on our student monitoring from the winter, which also includes growth data because we had information from the fall. And I'm going to remind everybody of the Ed Quality Committee's goal, which is to develop and have the board adopt a system for monitoring student achievement by this June. And it's a smart goal. It's been our same goal that we've had for a year. It's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And we are on schedule to do that. We're going to be at our next two Ed Quality meetings reviewing our schedule and our monitoring process and coming up with a timetable and an official process that we will bring to the board in June. Thank you, Ursula. So many of you are on the Ed Quality Committee or came to the meeting. So um, I want to let you know I've made a couple of tweaks based on that particular um, meeting. And so this is one. I just want to remind the board that um, this monitoring is sort of very much a balcony level monitoring, and that is the appropriate role of the school board. And there are lots of other ways that we look at data in the school system. And so I gave you examples. So the Ed Quality Committee is the group that takes up the subcommittee of the board that takes the deeper dive to our district for, into our district level data um, because they need to uh, help the whole board realize uh, its roles and responsibilities related to supporting our students and the achievement of their student learning outcomes. At the leadership team level, we look at data, uh, district and school level, the principals are looking at data, our teachers are looking at data, and um, students are looking at their performance as well. So, um, just for those of you who aren't yet familiar with iReady, iReady is the common assessment tool that we're using across the district um, in grades K through 10. iReady measures both student performance in terms of proficiency and growth. We're going to dive into that a little bit more in a minute. This is our current practice. So in reading, we currently administer it in grades 3 through 10, three times a year. And in math, currently K through 10, kindergarten is optional in the fall, again, three times a year. Um, the math uh, uh, diagnostic directly relates to a, an instructionalized, uh, a personalized instruction program that we have that complements our first instruction program, kindergarten through grade eight. And so in terms of measuring proficiency, um, there are five placement levels. I've put them there for you. And, um, and so we're looking at kids wanting to be in the beginning of the year, early on grade level, and by the end of the year at mid and above grade level. And then we have kids who are one grade level below, and then two, and then three or more. Um, kids who are in kindergarten or first grade can't go three or more grade levels below grade level. So, um, Let's see, anything else I wanted to say about that? Oh, the other thing I guess I would say that you can't see right here is that we can also look at the data. We are not going to do this at the district level, but at the school level um, or at the board level, for the leadership team in schools and, and other levels, we can look at the domain specific data as well. So just so you know, the math domains, which are aligned to the Common Core and aligned to our student learning outcomes, are number and operations, algebra and algebraic thinking, um, measurement and data and geometry. And for reading, they are phonological awareness, phonics, high frequency words, uh, vocabulary, comprehension of literature, and comprehension of informational text. So we had included in your packet that one page overview of the growth model and the link to this video that I hope you had an opportunity to look at. I think um, the biggest takeaway from this particular slide is an understanding that the growth targets are unique to each student. So a child takes the diagnostic the first time in the fall and based on their grade level and their score, they get um, unique, two unique growth targets. One is their typical growth and one is their stretch growth. 
Um, and again, millions of kids take this and the typical growth is the average amount of growth that they would expect a child to make based on what grade level they're in and where they placed initially. Um, and again, we look at it over a year and the stretch growth is, um, is attainable, but much more ambitious. And, um, and sometimes the kids are significantly below grade level, even if they achieve their stretch growth in one year, they will not hit proficiency in that year. But if they continue to achieve their stretch growth, they will get to proficiency. Um, and Curriculum Associates, the company that, that operates the whole thing, says 20 to 30 percent um, of kids nationally make their stretch growth each year. And, um, and so for our winter diagno diagnostic, we get to see how our kids are doing toward their typical growth and their um, stretch growth goals. And so at mid-year, we'd want to see them at least 50 percent of the way toward their goals. Um, here is an example just of the overall placement. So I didn't give you the SNP of the domain specific uh, information that we could get. This is an example of a student who is in seventh grade who took the diagnostic in the winter and you can see that the student is, is significantly below grade level right now and that student is making incredible progress right now. So you can see um, their typical growth and their stretch growth. They had already um, made uh, an incredible amount of stretch growth just from the fall into the, into the winter diagnostic. I just wanted you to see a snip of what a student report might look like. If you have an earlier version of the slides or you printed it out, I realized I made a mistake in the slide. So this, it said in your copy uh, originally three through 10, it's actually three through eight. And that's true in the next slide too. There are no growth scores for ninth and 10th grade. So we administer it through 10th grade. And I, um, although this graph is both proficiency and growth, it does not represent our ninth and 10th graders because they don't get growth scores. So this is showing you um, each dot represents one of our schools. And, um, and this is how they were doing toward um, thinking about both the performance of the kids. So toward proficiency and their grade level targets and um, their progress toward their typical growth. And so at the midpoint of that Y axis, that would be 50% um, of their growth. And they are all in quadrant one, and that is all good. <laughs> That's reading. That's exactly where we would want our kids to be. Um, I want to see what else I want to say about that for you. Curriculum associates, if we were sort of explaining this to the general public, would say, um, look at how to build on any, any school that's in that quadrant. Look at how to build on that grade um, school's growth or performance success. And keep in mind that half of the students are performing at, um, and growing less than the median. That I forgot to say the median part. This is all based on the median student performance. So half of them are not quite performing there. So just to keep that in mind. And here's math. Um, so not as strong. And I want to um, read to you what each of those quadrants mean. So again, the darker blue means that two of our schools scored pretty much at the exact same place um, in terms of the winter data. But I want to show you, um, talk to you about um, the low performance, low growth quadrant. So quadrant three, um, curriculum associates would say, so the median performance is 50% of the national, is below 50% of the national average, and the median progress to typical growth is less than 50% toward, um, toward their typical progress. And they would say, dive deeper into the data to create an action steps to move all students forward. Remember, half of these students are growing and performing higher. Look at what those students are doing and continue to build and replicate mm -hmm. that. And then for high performance, high growth, um, look at how to capitalize on this school's or grade levels above average performance, dive deeper into the growth data and um, see where they're growing and how to accelerate their learning in other areas. So those are kids who are doing quite well, but they're just not growing. And we don't want that either. 
we want all of our kids to be making um, at least a year's worth of typical growth. We don't want them to be stagnant in any way. So, so how do you be high-performing low growth? It means that our kids were doing well already, Chris, but they're just not making lots of growth to get even stronger or even better. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. So we are also disaggregating our data. Um, and so we've plotted both um, some, some information about proficiency and then some information here about typical growth and stretch growth. A couple of things um, to note. This is by gender. And, um, and you know, we've been doing a lot of work in this district related to gender. Right now, we have to report um, on, in the binary. So males and females, this graph does represent what our students prefer um, or how they identify, which is different than what the state requires. And uh, we're still working with both the state and um, Infinite Campus to ideally someday have more than two categories. Um, but this is what our students have identified as. So this is how um, our kids are doing. And, um, and so you can see that at the winter, um, our kids were, uh, half of them almost were proficient or above, right, where we would want them to be. And, um, and then the way that we calculated for growth was we took the kids who were, had met at least 50% um, toward their growth goal, and, and we categorized them in that way for you all. So um, that's math on the left and reading on the right, and you'll see that trend that our, throughout all of these, that our reading scores are higher than our math scores. You just saw that in the overview. Um, and the growth data, again, does not include grades nine or 10 because they don't get growth scores. And remember math is um, K if they took it in the fall and then um, through 10 and reading is grades three through 10 right now. This is the same data um, disaggregated by race and ethnicity. And um, in the group that is sustained historically marginalized are all of our students who identified um, as races or ethnicities other than white and not historically marginalized are students who are, well, who are white as reported in our student information system. It's not self-reported. And so you can see there's a, a difference there with um, the stretch growth in math, but otherwise um, all pretty comparable. Um, next is by free and reduced um, lunch qualification or not. You can see that difference, and you can see where the difference becomes um, starker than it was when we disaggregated for the other two categories. It, Jen, could you talk a little bit more about that? The difference in proficiency is stark. But then there's relative parity in the, in the growth and stretch growth. Yeah, so kids are doing well. They're growing around the same rates right now, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, whether they qualify or not. But there, there, there are more children who are not meeting where we would want them to be if they're qualified for free and reduced lunch. Is, is that a silver lining or not? Um, I that, 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 that everyone seems to be achieving growth. I think it's... Rate. I don't, I, I would not categorize it as a silver lining. Right. I would say we want both. So it's something for us to be paying attention to. Right. Um, you know, at Ed Quality the other day, there were questions about, well, are these are statistically significant or not? And um, I haven't crunched the numbers or the stats since college. Um, and so I can't, I didn't do the, I don't know. Um, and I would say, and I am not intending to be flippant in, flippant in any way, but I would say, I don't know that it matters if they're statistically significant or not because we were responding to the data. We don't want differences in performance among our subgroups. We want all of our kids to achieve at high levels and we want them all to be growing. And when they're not, we wanna be able to be in a position to respond to that. I would also add, and I don't know if this is a softened silver lining, but if when there is a proficiency gap, if there wasn't stretch growth or if there were gaps in stretch growth that would be that would be especially concerning mm -hmm. because then they're not narrowing it this might be telling us 
that at least the same, that students are stretching at the same rate as their peers who are perhaps proficient. And that's a, that is a good thing. So it's like a modified silver lining. Would it be a fair inference to say that our instruction is helping everyone, at least the data, helping everyone rise equally, no matter where they started? I would say, Yes, when you look at our district snapshot, I would say our principals took a deeper dive into their school level level data, and um, and that is true in many places, and, and sort of a pause for consideration in other places. Or sometimes we've, we're we're wondering about um, kid like some interventions being incredibly effective, and kids who are maybe just below, just not quite making the growth that we'd want. And so those are the conversations we started to have at the leadership team when we looked at this data. And would you all, principal, would you add anything to that? Does that that sounds about accurate? Yeah. 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 Okay. Jim, is there something about the instruction that seems to kind of generate growth in the same way? Um, but not proficiency in the same way. Well, one thing that we're starting to pay attention to, in, and we can do this in math, we can't do it in reading, but is the relationship between personalized instruction, that my path in the math program, and student performance, because there are the, there's an optimum number of minutes that kids might spend engaging in personalized instruction and their pathway in personalized instruction is set based on their diagnostic results. And so we're starting to look at that and wonder about the role in per, of personalized instruction in terms of helping students make growth. And the other thing is this is the midpoint. So um, we're gonna wanna see what does it look like at the end of the year as well. This is just this snapshot right now. I'm going to move to the next slide. Next slide. Oh, sorry. So sorry. No, I was going to say, would um, I don't want to say success, but would seeing <laughs> higher growth percentages in our pre introduced lunch or next slide will be IEP, but um, would seeing higher growth, typical I, growth and stretch growth in our, we'll call it the blue category, be ideal. I, I think that? we would want to see for students who were below grade level, more of them making their stretch growth. That would be awesome because yeah. that's the pathway toward proficiency ultimately. And that is going to take more than one year. Yeah. 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 This is um, a good segue or so like here's the IEP data. Um, which again, you've you've seen some data that mirrors these patterns, um, and this is this is work for us to to do. So some um, wonderful growth and a, a ways to go in terms of achieving proficiency. Another slide, just for those of you who were in ed quality, here's a new one, just to spice it up a little bit. Um, some of you were asking about, uh, just more about what does it look like to think about the data. And so I gave you an example at each of these levels about questions that we might ask. Um, and so I had like a million more, but it was too much and too overwhelming. So here's just a, a little snippet. So again, wanting to look at performance, wanting to look at uh, their growth. Um, you can see drilling into some domain specific instructional priorities. And then kids, and this is um, this is an area for us to grow. Um, I just had a curriculum council meeting earlier today, and we were talking about the next step in um, making not the, the local comprehensive assessment plan more than a plan, but a system. And we've been talking um, as a leadership team and with instructional coaches about how do we continue to infuse more data chats, more data literacy in our practices. And so one example here is just you know, really sharing those the performance very transparently with our kids and, and saying, okay, here's your performance. What's the goal that you want to do? Or what, what are you proud of when you think about how you did in the fall and how you did in the winter? Those are um, areas that, that it exists in pockets and we want to grow the, that um, practice. And then um, Ursula, back to you. I'm going to ask board members, um, thoughtful question of does this information in the report serve our goal of building a system to monitor student achievement and i'd like to hear from you so we can 
yeah, the data in this report is so much better and clearer and more helpful than I've seen before. A huge improvement. Thank you. So, gentlemen, you said we're in the balcony. I'm just wondering, are we in the nosebleed section? I was just just to um, comment on that that initial slide you shared with us about sort of where what grain size oh, yeah. we're supposed mm -hmm. to be looking at this. I think by and large I agree with it, but I, I think there are problems that it poses. Like you yourself brought up when asked a question about you know the parity and whether that that was what we were looking at. And you said, well, in fact, if you look at it at the school level, it's a more complicated and nuanced story. And then I guess that just gives me pause that the grain size is always appropriate. And I would just say we also trust you to change the grain size on us when it's mm -hmm. when there's a story to be told at the school level oh yeah instead. absolutely i i appreciate that daniel and our principal is right principal reports focused on academic achievement too that's another place where they might want to highlight and complement the overall thing you know things that you're hearing so that you have the information that you need yeah could be helpful we see these disparities and the, the why, the potential why, because then you don't always know why. Um, but just throwing out ideas as to why you know you folks think that we are experiencing these disparities and you know <laughs> different options for trying to what you to try and deal with it. And then just come back and say, well, this didn't work that, you know, but this did. And just because I think that helps at least get to the why question for us rather than just this is a you know, we see these disparities. And yeah, I would also add, Chris, you're making me think about um, continuous improvement planning, which is a responsibility of the board as well, where we can drill into those some of those questions as well. And that for monitoring, as long as if we are doing it regularly and doing it well, you'll have the information you need so that when it comes time to do continuous improvement planning, it doesn't seem completely out of the blue, but as a coherent part of what we're doing across the board. And related, picking up a thread that we've kind of touched on a few different times, including at Ed Quality. So it's a bit of a repeat comment, but I think it's important. As we, as we plan our work for next year at our retreat, we want to talk about um, there's a monitoring cycle and then there's a presentation cycle to illustrate for you what it actually looks like. Some of, some of our instructional programs, and I think the two go together because they kind of answer they are part of the answer to, here's what the data shows, here's what we think is going on, and here's what we're doing about it. It's that here's what we're doing about it piece that I think would be a helpful layer to add to this. So, and I would add, add to that, that again, how do you, what's that continuum of fidelity mm -hmm. to what, what we're doing? You know, how are we able to onboard new teachers to these processes, and how are we doing keeping it fresh and engaged with them? Teachers. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that this is the data is super important as we start to have more multi year data mm -hmm. for us. How we also are going to start planning mm -hmm. our, you know, our, our budgeting and how is the floor we would make more data informed decisions for the balcony. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. So I, I, I thought this is, this is great. I love the focusing on the growth and stretch data and like you know there's a lot especially in the slide on um, not in, you know hopefully we'll be able to move from the binary gender soon but a race and ethnicity you know I definitely for me having that stretch growth be so significant is you know worrisome but but it's in that positive way I, I don't know how to describe it like that it feels attainable in some way so hopefully Well, you want to do the next question?
I, I, Thank I, you, I, Jen. I'm going to throw one thing out there. We, I think to answer that question, this is an excellent way to monitor student achievement if we're defining student achievement in the in terms mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. literacy and math. Mm -hmm. And I know that's the easiest thing to measure, but mm -hmm. I just want to mm -hmm. put out there to keep in mind that there are other ways that students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Show, show great achievement. We might enjoy. <laughs> I readies are a lot. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm done with them. <laughs> yeah, there's not too. Yeah. <laughs> the older they get, the less they are. They are good Okay, we're gonna move into our reports and start with our student report. <laughs> Okay, so as you can tell, Maya's not here. So both of our languages just left to go to France or Spain. So our Spanish classes left yesterday and they're now in Seville. And our French students left today. And I think they're- right about now. Yeah, they're, they're in Canada right now flying over. So they're all really excited. They're all like, stressing out about like actually being in a different country and learning to actually speak the language and not really like conversation stuff but they're all really enjoying it they're all super jet lagged right now but they're all really excited and they're happy um so that's where Maya is Maya's in France <laughs> um I had I talked to a couple kids and teachers about IC and so IC is our like grading system and how parents can see stuff and it's kind of just like where everything is. It is not very loved at the moment and a lot of people find it frustrating because it doesn't show a clear view of grades and like progress and everything. I know, speaking from personal experience, if you get a two, that doesn't show the process of getting a three, which can lead to not great circumstances. Um, so there's definitely, I think IC is going to come up more as the end of the year and also next year because I know a lot of people are not having the best time with it. Um, Pippin, our theater production just ended and that was Maya who was the stage manager's last mm. show mm. and so I'm sure she had a lot more to say but um, I personally didn't see it, but I only heard good things about it, and they worked really, really hard on it. I think our theater department does a really great job at the visual part and just like the talent. We have a lot of talent and students. <laughs> um, our seniors are getting news about college, so a lot of kids are starting to accept their college things or figure out what their next plan is, and if that's a gap year or working, so a lot of kids are starting to get ready to leave you 32. Um, we had a substance meeting, so about drugs and alcohol, and as in our um, student community and how that is getting affected and like the norms, the social norms of like drinking and taking drugs. Um, it was interesting to hear because there was, I went and listened and there was a couple different grades and the from from a middle schooler to a senior talking about the norms and what's around in our school or in our in parties or just in our community what is seen as normal and I thought that was a really fascinating meeting because you can see it's becoming a much more casual thing but there's still definitely that strong and safety sense where a lot of students are safe and they do understand risks they take but still not the best thing to know but happens I'm sure you all were in high school once <laughs> um, our spring sports are starting um, we're doing really well our lacrosse girls game just played um, Spalding and they destroyed them so that's great um, <laughs> our tennis team tried their best I know Floor knows that <laughs> um, but the warm weather is really having effect on students and you can like tell like kids are happier they're getting sun um, as happy as we are we're very stressed there's AP testing and SATs coming up so a lot of kids are grinding out their homework and trying to get as much as done to study and prep. So a lot of kids I know are studying over the break 
Speaking of break, we have Finally. spring break in two days, and that is just going to be so lovely. <laughs> um, I know a lot of kids, including myself, are just ready to do nothing and relax and obviously catch up on homework. Um, <laughs> um, May 20th. Does anyone know what May 20th is? My son's birthday. Yep. Really? <laughs> <laughs> My son's birthday too. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, it you're is. both wrong. It's prom. <laughs> <laughs> so prom is coming up, and the juniors and seniors, sorry sophomores, are getting very excited to get their dresses, their tux, their outfits already and it's going to be from 8 to 11 p.m. and so a lot of kids are getting excited and I think it's going to be great. Um, if you have high school students you need to make sure they get a ticket before no later than May 18th and they're $25. <laughs> All right, um, word of mouth is coming up again so word of mouth is a performance. It's pretty laid back. It's all original piece and we're bringing it back to transition time. So while kids walk to their next class. So that was the original word of mouth. While kids walk to their next class, there will be music playing and not on the overhead, but kids actually performing. Um, and there's all that scheduling got moved around. So everything will be set. Um, it, I was in the first one and there was only three performers. And now I went to a meeting about it and there's eight. So it really sparked interest and a lot of kids are excited to perform. And to finish us up, this Friday is a talent show during Kovac. So mm -hmm. that should be very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. I think so. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions for members? Yeah. What is word of mouth? I'm not. Oh, okay. Sounds cool, but I'm like, Yeah. So word of mouth, it's kind of like a talent show. It's a performing time. So students have to have an original piece. So it's either poetry, singing, music playing, dancing, any kind of art form, comedy even. That's how we stopped doing it because comedy wasn't the best. <laughs> um, but we brought it back. But everything's original piece, and so kids get get the chance to perform with it being their own moment versus being a talent show where you sing or do someone else's piece. It's your own original piece. And originally it was through transition time, so while you go to class. But last. The first time, just to inspire kids, we did it during a callback, and everyone was called back to the atrium, and it was really cool to see. But now we're bringing back the original piece to it, where you can walk by and not stay. But there is a time at the end of the day that everyone will get called back to, for the louder pieces. <laughs> I have a comment. Okay, so, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, one, I saw Pippin and it was great. <coughs> so just want to give a shout out to everybody involved in that. Um, and I also got to see the Seeking Social Justice group present at the um, conference in Royalton. And they did an amazing job. And based on what I heard from other people who were participants in that session, they were really impressed mm -hmm. with nice. what the students presented and want to kind of bring them to, to do work in other schools so they can emulate what we're doing here. To go off of that, so yeah, Seeking Social Justice, our green team, our um, conversation, our student-led groups are so successful. Mm -hmm. And I think U32 does a really good job of allowing students to really focus on something they feel is important and act on it mm -hmm. and really support them. Um, the conversation is a group that just kind of talks about the sexual assault um, community, kind of, and how we can t make a safer environment for everyone, including really focusing on women and people part of the LGBTQ plus community. So we did have a walkout the couple callbacks ago, and Alice Lamb and Anora Sylvester, 
<laughs> um, they talked about, they work with the Mosaic, and so they had a full, full um, presentation and like visuals of just how to do better as a community and really take rape culture and like jokes and stuff and take that away and really show the support our school has. Because we do have moments in our school that we need to work on and stuff like that. Like everyone does. But that was really powerful and they did an insane job. Welcome back everybody. We're gonna move into our next report, Superintendent Central Office Leadership. Have any highlights? So i uh, happy to answer questions, but I'll highlight two things. Um, one is just there's an update in here on where we are with climate surveys. So we had talked about that earlier in the year. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to be really thoughtful about it. I, I think that we, um, the product at the end will give both us and also the board some good information. Um, and then there's just a pretty, pretty uh, a, an update in here around kind of policy procedure overview, which I've also talked about in the past. Um, there's a lot we there's a lot we have, there's a lot we don't have, there's a lot that we're close to. Um, so there's a pretty good overview in here, um, a look ahead for what the board can expect before the end of this year, and then um, when we build our work plan for the following year, it will kind of build in a more regular cycle for that policy review. So happy to answer questions. Questions from the board, from Megan? Uh, otherwise, I just wanted to, uh, just because we were talking about, I had underlined some of your own language so that it will help us at the board monitor. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Eventually, this will help us with our superintendent relation to, mm -hmm. and you know, just in general, so along the lines that you were yeah. talking to Michaela about how our students are doing and how our school it gives us data mm -hmm. that is not necessarily related to reading and writing. So I really appreciated that on the report and your next steps sounds like mm -hmm. are very solid. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, can you tell yeah. us what, what um, Cindy Coleman Warren, what they're doing at Yes, the thank you. Um, so Cindy is doing, uh, with a specific focus on the human resources related policies, so we have some front-loaded work that's needed. I say, I just used the word policy incorrectly, procedures. We have a lot of HR-related procedures that either were lost in the um, cyber attack or were never created as a single system. And there's a little bit of digging out from under that. So Cindy is working with us on um, what do we know we don't have and what do we not know that we don't have? And then she will do some of that, that procedure development for us. Um, and that's sort of more administrative related procedure. So some front loaded work. And she is also um, gonna set up a more regular meeting with us so that when we have kind of um, HR related questions of you know, organizational pieces, she can be available for that. But the focused work right now is on procedure development, specific to HR. Um, also, in, in, um, on page 15, you use the word dysregulated for students. Mm -hmm. Does that have a specific technical definition, or is it just kind of a word? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. In education? It's, uh, thank you. Thank you for calling it on, um, I think it, I would say it's jargon and it's all, but it's, we try really hard when we talk about student behavior. The reason we use dysregulated is because it's an acknowledgement of the state of the child as opposed to a judgment about the child or the behavior or uh, there's a, you know, and I think we try really hard, dysregulated kids need help and we have to figure out what's going on and re-regulate them. Um, so it, that's sort of an explanation for why we use dysregulated as opposed to words that have more emotion behind them. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Kara, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I was thinking of it relating to a physiological state as mm -hmm. opposed to a personal attribute. So someone may be dysregulated because they're hungry and so mm -hmm. they're not feeling good in their body that's manifesting those behaviors. They may feel lonely or shameful 
but it's a way to tie it to more the bodily experience, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to maybe labels that might be imposed by their uh, disability or characteristics mm -hmm. of them. Thanks. Yeah. I have a, just a comment that might fall into the board learning category, but this, this raises it for me, which is that I haven't, for myself, haven't seen or been able to visualize like a list of policies and a corresponding mm -hmm. sort of list or groupings of procedures. Mm -hmm. And that would be really helpful for me to see. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm curious, maybe this is part of Cindy's work, but are there areas where we have a policy but, but not mm -hmm. a clear grouping of procedures or vice versa? Absolutely. What you have here is the narrative summary of a procedures manual mm -hmm. that we are developing along with Cindy and my goal would be that that manual itself can be on the website mm -hmm. so that people can say oh here's the procedure associated with the policy um, and so there is actually a draft version of exactly what you described that will eventually be public facing um, we're in the what do we have what do we don't have what do we prioritize and then but yes yep Good question I, and I had a question, I think it's related to this, and maybe toward our ret retreat as a board to have who actually is working in central office, kind of that administrative team, or, and an all this, chart. yeah, an organizational yeah. chart, because um, there's been a lot of change, mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily see or hear, or I've had, we sometimes have constituents make statements about top heavy or not top heavy or things and if I don't have that information it would be helpful to have that information <clears throat> happy to give the org chart um, the other thing is in one of the budget meetings and I'm not going to remember which one but in the Colt report there was comparative mm -hmm. central office comparisons central office size mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. tuning into your comment about mm -hmm. people worrying if that we are top heavy right we do have a Mm -hmm. A grid. I mm -hmm. think it's in a follow-up report. Maybe the second budget meeting. Second budget meeting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anyway, I can dig it up and mm -hmm. pass it back on. But can, also, okay. or chart, I think would be. Well, we in the budget meetings. We've talked about student numbers going down, mm -hmm. and we know we're going into a very tough budgeting year. Yeah. So, you, so the question that was asked was, what, "How do our central offices compare to other similarly mm -hmm. sized districts?" Mm -hmm. And we I remember have that, that data in there. Yep. But that doesn't necessarily include like names and people. Or, no, exactly. Like That's the why organizational the chart. chart. Would be an yeah, to that, that would be good. Sure. Yep. Thank you, Megan, for that. And just to piggyback on what Daniel was saying, Man and I had been having conversations just because we're going to have a retreat too of how to focus our policy and procedure learning from the board. That might be a way to do our next level of learning, just like we were doing the student learning outcomes and we were learning that fail. So more to come on that, but we would get to brainstorm together about that. A principal report, <coughs> any highlights or questions from the board? I guess since we're in finance, we're gonna do the playground. I don't know if there's a fun letter from one of your writing pieces, Alicia, you could share about a piece of equipment that maybe was not even possible or maybe it's possible, but like, mm. just to, since we're going to be talking about it. I'm like, happy to share it in an hour when you talk about it. I can, I can talk about some thoughts around it. Okay, sure. Do you want to wait until you discuss Do you want to stay all the way for finance? That Say Do you want to stay all the way for finance? Or yes, I'm going to stay. Okay, okay, stay. okay. So then, <laughs> any other questions from board members? Okay. I appreciated the sharing of, there were some, a couple of things about field trips, and I had just recently heard how that's one thing that went away during COVID, and a lot of places haven't brought them back, so I appreciated hearing about it coming back and, and, and acknowledging the challenges that has brought for kids who haven't realized what it means. <laughs> I 
really enjoy the section of that humanity and justice and equity and mm -hmm. every school's voice, but at the same time, every, as the year has passed, how much more alignment there is mm -hmm. in the work that mm -hmm. they're doing. It's just, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing that. So moving into, if there's no, oh, that's me. Uh, the Center of Vermont Career Report, uh, I'm going to be super brief. I'm not sure if you guys get the newsletter from the Career Center, but I'm going to try to start sending that to you guys. But a couple of highlights of that is that uh, they had a curriculum instruction review on both Megan and Stephen, and it was from our district, just two, just the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, I'm not going to read everybody's name, but they participated, and it was it was just it was great. It was really it was very meaningful for for the district to have them. You know, Career Center is now a district too. It, the other highlight is that 18 of our students participated in the HOSA, which is the Future Health Professionals, mm -hmm. and it, well, actually 24 of the students ended up participating. But there were a lot of winners also at the national skills. Especially, I want to talk about the plumbing section because we just had a, a, both Pete and um, Adam Chase. A, Adam Chase is the teacher. He had experience. It's the first time that the Career Center is doing this. Adam Chase is a teacher that is there five days a week, and then they have a, a person from industry that is there three mm -hmm. times a week because he has the. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not able to fill this profession, this position last year. I don't know if you remember this out here. Uh, just struggling to find a uh, plumbing teacher, so um, Pete jumped in into it, not so sure uh, about teaching, mm -hmm. and now he's found himself as he's getting ready to retire, uh, loving teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think what was most uh, inspiring for me, uh, at, at every meeting we get to hear from one of the different classes, and plumbing presented at our last time, and uh, they so high expectations that mm -hmm. they have and how much they believe uh, in their in their students and it was also something that was highlighted if I'm not wrong when you guys did the curriculum review as a positive to have somebody from <coughs> industry so they are getting to order their materials they get to check the list they are delivering to the career center is one less step also for the career center mm -hmm. because you have somebody from industry that has had for 44 years their own <coughs> uh, company and there's 10 students in that class, and they also are working towards their first year apprenticeship test, mm -hmm. and also getting to work on par with their um, code book. Mm -hmm. and, and, just, and there's not, as you all know, there's not enough plumbers in the state. Every time we get together, most of the plumbers are retiring, and the average age is like 55, so like really get this kids in. It's, it's really great, and they're just, mm -hmm. they're just amazing. So that's what I had to report about the Career Center. It, the next one was the ESBA report, so that I'll be super brief. The resolution process is an opportunity for us to highlight something that is important. You guys get the ESBA newsletters. It, you, we operate by resolutions. It, Curry, the last time you had mentioned to me something about rural school, you know, like we could think about, uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time because we had a, a break. We can, there's a resolution kit in our, in our website. Uh, all proposed resolutions uh, should be in by June 15 because we start our work in July and try to have the report by 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 August. But uh, if there's any questions on how to do that work or any ideas, we should probably schedule it for our next meeting. So I just wanted to put it on your radar. Mm -hmm. And if there's any questions that we should bring to the steering committee at our next meeting, please. Uh, so, so was that suggestion I had about? VSBA leading a study of what it's like for rural populations to depopulate and the effects that it has on schools. Would that be so, appropriate so for maybe, resolution? So maybe not this study, but okay. it could be of how uh, decisions of rural communities. And we could take a dive and just see what existing resolutions uh, we, we have. There's something that nationally has a lot of attention right now, so mm -hmm. we're trying to look at data from the rural perspective and the urban perspective. And in Vermont, we are kind of a microcosmos of that because you have Burlington and Winooski <coughs> yeah, and that have a really they're urban and they're still growing. And then you have all of us in the rural districts that are declining and how you know the millions of things coming from the legislature sometimes affect differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so, it's just something for us to think about it. So there's a, like I said, there's a little kit there, and we can 
talk about it or if there's something that you f any of you feel passionate about to advocate for, for our students, now is the time to, to talk about it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it. And then moving the corporations. If, or any questions on that or any? No. Moving to the next steps for our master review. I hear some like it's oh, it's the announcement. Yeah, it's yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. yeah. It's like, it almost yeah. feels like praying. You know, <laughs> 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 it's freezing cold out there for those parents yeah, yeah. Yeah. and those kids. <laughs> So in the in the next break, uh, steps for the mascot, uh, we can we can start by that question that was asked right when we were um, finalizing the presentation of the students. So we are uh, we we sent a letter back to them telling them that we were involved in this mm -hmm. process, and that's uh, as far as I know, and as far as uh, that's all we have to do with them because there's no follow back from them, they sent a general letter to the legislature, not directly to us, mm -hmm. that they are going to be addressing this issue directly to the legislature, and they are not going to be attending any school board meetings. They felt the process was too um, elaborate for, for them. So now it's like the conversation really is about what do we uh, want from our students and continue to have that, continue to have that student voice. Yeah, so I don't, of course I have lots of comments, but I want to try the conversation. So our next steps would it be to, what do we want to ask our students? Is this enough information from them? Would it be good to have them go a little deeper and uh, reach the, our elementary schools? What do, what do we want? We are also involved in our strategic planning right now with the possibility of, you know, not, uh, having a better understanding of what our communities want and how do they, um, all of this could inform this conversation too. So we're not in, what I'm trying to say is that we're not in a very strict timeline, so we have the ability to continue to have this conversation and also be truthful to our vision and strategic planning, right, that could inform this conversation too. So with that, I don't know what thoughts you guys have. So I guess the question that comes to mind based on what Chris raised was procedurally, based on what we've said our policy is, well not what we've said, we voted for our policy to be, have we followed the procedure that's required? So, um, you know, that's what I heard the question of is, and thought that's a good close the loop moment. Yeah, I mean, I think that, and we sort of touched on this, um, the pieces that I think are relevant that we would be doing regardless of the letter, um, one of them is we review our policy per our policy review cycle, provide recommendations. That's something that will happen ongoing mm -hmm. as part of policy. So that's number one under administrative responsibilities. Then it's assist the school board in its review of the district school branding to ensure compliance with the policy. Following any branding changes or updates to the policy. We did this because this is a branding policy. And and Jonas, your question was sort of this. Do we do we feel like we are in compliance? Um, so there, our job was to inform you as you make that decision about whether or not you think we're in compliance with that, um, which is essentially Jonas's question. So there, there um, could be a future discussion and action to affirm or not affirm the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously, under administrative responsibilities, we have to ensure that we prohibit branding that references or stereotypes. That's the image association mm -hmm. part of it. I, I think that's the part that's actually pretty clear in this report, is the imaging association, or the imagery associated with it. Um, is not likely a policy violation. The perception around the word, that's mm -hmm. the part of the conversation mm -hmm. to have. And then develop a procedure for an individual to file a complaint that an element of a school branding is in violation. That's one of those things that will be on that um, policy manual and procedures manual. So in terms of that's, that is the, that list of things is what our policy asks. And then our policy asks that if someone makes a complaint, mm -hmm. You allow them a hearing if they would like one, 
and to Flora's point, we reached out, we offered a hearing, and they have not reached back out. So that's the policy answer to, to the question about what we're, what we're supposed to do. I don't recall, did they specifically ask for a hearing in the letter? They, they asked in general for, for yeah, that was the expectation. They asked for yeah. a hearing? Yeah. 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 They just felt like it was going to be one for all, is my understanding mm -hmm. from other, instead of like being, having to go to each individual school, but there's no process to just, well, to each, just do that. Mm -hmm. But each board has different history, potentially, mm -hmm. uh, for the origin of the, you know, exactly. the mascot or the name, so mm -hmm. it would have to be, yeah. I think it would have to be individual and personal. Right. Um, okay. And I think they asked for a opportunity to appear before the board. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they've invoked the complaint section, um, and we should do something. Either mm. to say we we have, haven't heard from you, so we're going to assume you don't want a hearing anymore. Um, just to kind of close the loop on that. Um, and if we don't hear from you, give, give it certain time deadlines. If we don't hear from you by in 14 days or whatever it is, that we'll consider this matter closed. Okay. And then, and, and I think to me, there's two different things. Do we do we want to close this discussion Not the completely discussion. with oh, them? Okay. With, yeah, them. with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It's with them. Okay. This is a very specific complaint, um, and and we would comply with our policy, and so that discussion is ongoing. Yeah. <coughs> okay. My sense is that they're, um, and again that. That doesn't preclude us from doing exactly what you just said to say, can we affirm that you are truly not asking for a hearing? Because right now we're, mm. we're taking their silence and this would be confirming it. I would say that what they've, what they've done almost in response to all of the individual board, they probably got some version of what we sent to from multiple boards. They, they have elevated that to, um, we to the General Assembly, because they have concerns about the legislation itself that puts the decision, frankly, they, they, have, they have concerns that the legislation itself puts the decision making in the hands of the boards. And they have a different opinion about what that legislation should have, so they've directed there um, that way. But that doesn't preclude us from just saying, following up. I suspect, I think of the reason I'm saying that is it's I suspect they will be reference that answer in their response to us. Yeah. I, I don't even know that we can count on our response, but we will follow up with the, we, we will follow up with them. So yeah. then, give So them that's good, I like that. And then the other question that I have is, what if anything else does the board need mm -hmm. in order to make a decision about whether our mascot is compliant with our policy? Do we need anything else? We need community input. Yeah. To hear from the community, and, and I, I suspect you will hear some strong views about the about the just because there's yeah, no, and I, it, may, maybe not. Oh, I, I think that, I think we should hear from the community. Yeah, and I, I think we should keep in mind keeping that student uh, student base. Mm -hmm. So still have the students be the ones to mm -hmm. me just like continue to empower them to have those conversations so either get them some supports mm -hmm. like we had said through up and learning but like have uh, a, them be the ones to reach out to elementary schools to so because they're going to be the ones that would be here also as seventh graders and eighth graders mm -hmm. and, and and reach out to the community and then report back to us more of, you know what how they visualize this work that they're doing would have an impact. What impact would they want to have in the future? To me, is more. That's what I was hoping that we could like get back to them and said, you know, please get more input. You know, 171 responses mm -hmm. from 700 is well, not a lot, but it was, and and also the data was a little yeah, mixed, right? That we we could drive that data however we want it in some ways, right? We could take some of the comments that were. We want them to have some ownership. It, so it didn't seem very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one way or another. Like, I think in some schools you'll get kind of feeling, and I didn't get that from those results. Yeah, that, that <laughs> okay. may be a reason to change it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that's right. Not. It's a data point by yeah, itself. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But the other, the, the what we did here, and I don't know if that uh, uh, meaning was accurate in terms of them, uh, the feeling on the survey saying, I'm not interested in exploring. Um, and their sense was because people didn't know what that meant and didn't want to take on that work. Mm. Um, and so I think that um, in opening it up to the community and that we need to have several scenarios as to what does this mean. If I say this, this is the potential next steps. If I say this, these are the potential next steps. Whether that's students who brainstorm what that is, but I think that if we want to have a have people clearly understand what, if I say this, these are the actions that might occur from that. Um, you know, there may be another, and people attribute different things to that, but I think we need to be clear in what our question is asking, what's the work that comes from that, potentially. Can I ask a question? Um, is it clear that it's the board's responsibility to recommend or change the mascot name or the name of the high school or is that the high schools that rest with the principal and the leadership? That's a great question. So I would answer it a couple ways. Our policy puts the responsibility on the board to make sure our mascot is non-discriminatory. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. implies some decision making authority in the context of if it's discriminatory it's your job to mm -hmm. make it not so. Mm -hmm. um, the second part of the question, if the board is ultimately makes a determination um, that it's not discriminatory, right, in some ways, the dis if it's not, dis you can decide that it's not discriminatory and still have a thought about whether or not it should change. Mm -hmm. Those two things can both yes. happen. Um, whether or not the decision about that part of it, who that sits with, I, it's the districts that have had to do this and have had those um, questions asked of the courts really do put that authority in the school board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that but that was the distinction between the voters versus the school board and oh. um, which is a different question than you're asking because you're asking is it high school meaning administration or the board yeah I just um, just from what they found I mean it was picked like the Raiders was the mascot was picked by a yearbook company mm -hmm. right you the know, image. so yeah. Yeah. Well, the image, the the image. image. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right that night, but so I just wonder, like, oh, if it's that easy, you know, if it's that just like contractual, like, yeah, I that just was a wonder. simpler time, those seven yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> time, recognize that. I just, you know, was curious of where our responsibility <coughs> ended, if not this group. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, I think if we are going to look deeper at this, first of all, I think. You know, I had some confusion around the imagery versus the name, so I think mm -hmm. making sure there's clarity there and in being very clear in the questions we're asking. And also, um, I don't know if anyone talked to the people that were yeah, in the school in 72 or whatever. They did a couple of interviews, they did, the with, students did, yep. With the students and teachers that were? Uh, they the were current uh, teachers that were students at the time. That were students. Because um, there are also teachers around that were mm -hmm. in the community still that were mm -hmm. teachers at the time. It would just be interesting mm -hmm. to maybe know a little. Because that's mm -hmm. the very first time I heard any reference to the Red Raiders. I, no, I don't highly I doubt that that was yeah. Yeah. right. But mm -hmm. the students seem to have some conception that that was the original inspiration, which was not my understanding. I think you're correct. And yeah. I would say only because I've had this conversation with those students, I think what, what Kai was talking about is other people outside of our community yeah. might be making an association yeah. that actually doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But the conversations we've been having are, if they're making that association, mm -hmm. even if they're wrong, does that still might cause yeah. us to want to do something, I think, yeah. is that. Pretty stretched since our colors have never been red and white, like yeah. Yeah. the other schools mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in one of their other comments, I think that last comment, especially, said it doesn't affect me personally. However, I'm worried about the possible connotations mm -hmm. and hateful meaning for others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think next up, so we still need. I think the board has to have a conversation mm -hmm. to decide what wow. we think that the school name. And the night need to change, or right? Do they fit with our non-discriminatory, non-offensive? Well, there's policy. two things, right? Change versus discriminatory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Because if we say it's discriminatory, then that triggers, right. yeah. that yeah. triggers yeah. something. Definitely yeah. change it. But, yeah. And I can understand that we could, I think that if it's not discriminatory, I think it can go back to the administration on whether or not, like given this feedback from the students where they're like, meh, we're ambivalent about it, maybe that is reason to change it, but it's no longer mm. our decision to tell them to do so. Mm -hmm. But we as a board need to decide whether or not we think that it is discriminatory before we can be like, you guys can figure out whether you want to change it or not, or whether we are like, mm, we think it's discriminatory, you need to change it. And then the, what happens after that, but I also think we need to set up parameters on how we're going to analyze this, because I think some things that have been brought up are the idea of like intent versus actual impact. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what the intent was, the impact is what matters. And mm -hmm. so, I think that that's one of those things we have to clear with that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think, um, I think you can say that it's not discriminatory now, but but I think, you know, even though that the report sort of shows that there's no legacy of like a racialized mascot, the fact that we, in this moment, have been associated with the Red Raiders controversy is sort of like data point number one. Mm -hmm. And now we have to be hyper aware of the fact that some might conflate it with that. And I think we have to be careful. I think the other thing I wanted to say was that, um, you know, if it's intended to the school community, but what I'm more interested in is the community of our five towns and what they think. I do think we need to get more public input from the five towns and citizens of the five towns. If there's some way to sort of put this out to the public, this was a little bit more reflection. Did we have any feedback with the, you know, there was a lot of um, concern about how we did the 50th anniversary. You know what I mean? And so there was a lot of strong opinions regarding yeah. that. And, um, and so I wonder if that uh, that group of people or anything might have something strong to say as well. You know what I mean? If that was one that got tapped or not. Or some history. Right. Yeah. So, um, I don't think we're associated with Red Papers. Uh -huh. I don't think that's been established in any way here by what we heard or any, so, um, and I, you know, but you make a good point about that was 72, this is now, what about the future? Um, should we have a vision in our policy where we evaluate it every 10 years? Why shouldn't the future generations be imprisoned by what these students now decide they want the mascot name to be or the school you know, or the team sports teams to be? I mean, why not? Why not? Every, you know, every, Policy said any time. Policy says. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, does yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. So I have a question, and this is not to. Um, so after, before this request came out from these groups that blanketed multiple schools at once. Um, my first question is, had we ever had a complaint from the community, outside the community, from the indigenous community about our mascot or mascot name? That's my first question. And then after this request came out, did we have any reaction from the community or anyone saying, yes, we agree with that? So is it just because of this group that put out this blanket letter to multiple schools? Or have we had anything in the past um, or after the fact with concern um, directly from direct community and stuff like that? So thanks, Eric. I asked that question because having not been here prior to this year. Um, so my understanding from conversations with Stephen is he's gotten in his tenure one question from, a, um, I assume, a parent, a family, a, a school community member just asking what's the origin and can you tell me about the image um, shared that shared pro uh, uh, probably a version of this and um, so I think the answer to that question at least in terms of people raising their hand officially is no that would that there have not been complaints raised um, 
I think there was some commentary in the community when this because it hit the newspapers and we were associated with those groups in the newspapers um, and then I would just remind us that the review and in a sense actually what we're doing right now we'd have been doing this either way because our policy asks us to and I don't if anyone who's been here longer, which is everyone. <laughs> if you don't have anything to add to that historical answer, feel free. Natasha. Um, so a couple comments. One, I do remember being a student and the question about Raiders and actually Worcester Warriors being raised around the violent nature of the mascot. Not necessarily um, did it have an association with um, indigenous people, but that it was just a it was a violent <laughs> um, mascot, and was that something that we wanted representing our students at both U32 and at Worcester? Um, and so that was happening when I was a when I was a student. As a former alumni who did three seasons worth of athletics and editor of the yearbook and stage 32, I could care less if Raiders continue to exist. Um, and I was a proud Raider, and I would be, you know, it would not bother me at all if U32 was no longer Raiders. Um, my other thought is when I read this, because we keep talking about discriminatory, but the way th number three reads, it says school branding that directly or indirectly references the likeness, feature, symbols, traditions, or other characteristics that are specific to any person, group of persons, or organization associated with the repression of others. And Raiders definitely repressed others throughout history, whether they were other white civilizations or non-white civilizations, that is the nature of a raider. <laughs> so, yeah, regardless of whether, yeah, so regardless of whether we can tie it directly to the Red Raiders or our indigenous population, based on number three, mm -hmm. the term raider cover, is covered mm -hmm. under 3B. Mm -hmm. So I just think that that's something that we need to think about. Um, and then my last comment is, being in other communities in Vermont, when conversations around mergers have happened, mm -hmm. and what do we do with our mascots, um, communities have like literally come to blows around this, and it's because of this legacy that alumni want to hold on to. God forbid I'm no longer a whatever, and if we change our mascot, that means my legacy no longer exists. And so I just, I'm not saying we shouldn't reach out to the community. I caution that because I'm not sure that the response we're going to get is going to be based on this, that it could be more based on this is my legacy as somebody who's been affiliated with the school system for X number of years. I, yeah. and, and I think that's why it's important to keep it at the student level and have the student voice be what drives, what, what drives, what drives this because I don't, I, I, I don't agree that it necessarily our, com it, our communities are the ones that support our students. But our students are smarter than we, like, you know, they represent our communities and their voice really matters, especially mm -hmm. in these occasions. And they have grown in a, in, a, in a different way than most of us, you know, in my generation, you know, I'm about to be 50. And they, they have more empathy, they understand each other better, they have a better understanding of the world, the context now, right? Because that's the other part that is really important. We also have to have capacity, mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. capacity of our district, right? Like we're in the middle of the strategic planning and visioning part. We can, it, we, you know, we, we can't be all things at once, but like I was saying, I think that our strategic planning and visioning plan is gonna inform this process. Mm -hmm. We can continue to let the students drive this process in a constructive way and get more information from community, from other schools while we're doing the vision pro uh, uh, visioning. We, you know, and then we can talk about, you know, the name, the, mm -hmm. you know, those conversations that we never had as a district mm -hmm. uh, together. It doesn't all need to happen today. Mm -hmm. That's, the, you know, like right now, like we can, we can plan ahead for, that, but Megan, no, I appreciate I appreciate the conversation a lot. I I come back to Kari's question about what do do you need to, in order to help you answer this question? Because I I think that the idea that the board would probably does need to come back and 
affirm a decision about that. this review. So this review's job was to help you, give you some information to be able to decide if your mascot, our mascot, is compliant with our policy. So I think you've got to come to that decision, which makes the question of what else do you need to know. Um, I can also come back to you, you with, I will work with the students on this, but also ad administrators, and kind of propose a, here's, here's how I think, because here's what I heard. I heard um, uh, elementary schools, um, maybe some more targeted questions to students. Um, I can come with some ideas about community input. Um, that doesn't mean you have to take them, right? But it allows you to have that conversation. Um, so a next step could be to come back to a, A, I could propose some additional engagement if you think that's important. Um, and if there's something you know right now that you would need to know that you don't know in order to make that decision, now is a good time to surface that because then I can bring it. But I do think that coming back and actually affirming what did this tell us yeah. is probably a good next step. Okay. And so just to clarify, the board's role is to decide whether or not it's discriminatory, mm -hmm. not to decide whether or not it's a good, like a mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. mass. Mm -hmm. I'm just to the discrim discriminatory question. Your policy mm -hmm. says for sure it's your job to do that, and that is an affirmative. If it is discriminatory, oh, it's we're good. changing it, right? I, I just am also acknowledging you could decide that it's not and still ask that we explore a change, but that's all. And it seems to me like gathering more information from the community is not necessarily needed to decide whether or not it's discriminatory. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. Mm -hmm. As an alumni who is very attached to being a radar, <laughs> a reader, um, I do recognize that it is, that I think it's discriminatory, mm -hmm. that I will admit, um, and I would be willing to change it, um, but maybe people don't feel like it's obviously discriminatory, in which case we need more information. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's discriminatory, so I'm not sure I need that. more information. Good point. Good point. I, I think mm -hmm. the process would just, if we did decide that, then, mm -hmm. then in community engagement is important, but I don't know. I would, I would say we shouldn't not engage the community because of the, we're concerned about the answers they may get back, um, because it's also an educational process. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that dialogue, um, and I ultimately think it is a board decision um, because we have talked in the past about naming parts of the building or naming mm -hmm. parts of, and that was ultimately a board decision that, that what we would or wouldn't do. Uh, and you know, I think having just the board be the ultimate decider uh, of what we're going to do is where that, that decision should come. So, in kind of just push back a little bit on naming is because we did that through policy, right? We created a policy to decide on naming or not naming parts of our building. So right yeah. now it would be similar, we would be answering to the questions on the policy and maybe what McKenna was saying, maybe we don't need more information for us to decide on the actual questions mm -hmm. on the policy, but so we could decide at our next board meeting on discriminatory or decide right now if people feel that way, but then still have a process. I, mm -hmm. I still feel like we need some kind mm -hmm. of rubric mm -hmm. or something to make that decision. Yeah, to, so to answer that question, what I want to know, which I think was largely answered tonight, was does the mascot actually cause anybody harm? You, you know, to the, in, in, the impact question. And I think the students telling us that they can't detect that anybody actually uh, definitively saying that they're harmed. They're worried that maybe mm -hmm. um, that's, but that's different in, in my mind. And so, and if this, if the people that are, you know, around the mascot all the time aren't telling us that they're harmed, I for one would be satisfied with that. But the next level would be to go to the community, I think, and ask anybody out there feeling harmed. I have. Um, one, going to the community, we need to understand that if we're going to get feedback, what are we doing with that information? So if we get a large number of people who are highly passionate with that, I am so attached to that Raider's name and I would hate for you to change it, I personally don't feel it's discriminatory. I'm not sure how that truly guides our decision making on is it actually discriminatory. And I think 
the idea of just going, well, nobody has spoken up yet. We need to remember one of the two groups that has brought this complaint forward is Indigenous-led. And they are leading a conversation that it is harmful. And we need to listen. Like, I, I am very white, and so I don't have a lot I can say on it. But I can say, we need to listen to them, and they have spoken. And I think that they are speaking. Um, just to kind of piggyback on that, I, I'm going to push back on students not saying they're harmed because I know that there are black students in the school who have heard the N-word used in classrooms and their response is, it didn't bother me, but it really bothered me. <coughs> so <laughs> I think we need to be careful that just because a student is saying, is not verbally saying I've been harmed, doesn't mean that they actually haven't been harmed. Mm -hmm. They may not feel safe saying that they've been harmed, mm -hmm. especially if they're on a sports team mm -hmm. and our identity is yeah. we're Raiders. Yeah. Or especially if they're in a group of people who strongly feel yeah. that this is important, this they're not going to feel safe. And I think that that is true when kids are in a situation where they, they do feel harmed, but yeah, aren't I, safe. I kind of wanted to reinforce something that has more to do with role of the board than even this issue, because I think it goes beyond the issue. And it's the point that you made, Ursula, about um, sometimes it's the job of the board to make a decision despite the input of the community. Mm -hmm. And and that maybe that's not the right way to say that, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not right your job. <laughs> right, like, like, it only, it, yeah, it, it doesn't have to match the will of the community. It right. doesn't mean that engaging the community around the issue is not an important right. part of the process, but I just think that's an important piece. And then end that. Joshua, you were. Joshua, you have your hand up there. Yeah, um, I don't know. It might be more of a process thing that maybe it, it might help us to think about by not voting or not coming to a decision tonight. I, I personally believe that we should change the name and we should change the mascot. I just wonder if to facilitate that process, I can get. I, I just wonder, be, because it maybe it could be argued either way about whether it is discriminatory or not, that what would be the best way to vote for that, to help facilitate that change without going through an exhaustive process of gathering information from the community. I mean, I don't know if the message from the board is more important that, like, recognizing, like, I wonder if that is a simple, if that is a decision that's important in itself, or if it's more important to help the students to get on with their work, and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so t to me, it goes back to the policy, though. You know, as you pointed out, Natasha, why do we have that statement if we're not going to listen to that statement? I mean, knights are oppressive. That's their role. I mean, and so if if we didn't agree with that representation, you know, that category, um, then we shouldn't have agreed to the policy. And so since we did agree to the policy, to me, it does fit very clearly under 3B, and I don't know how I would not vote. Mm -hmm. Can we take a straw poll? Yeah, we could take a straw poll. I, I think, I think the, the, the process, the rubric is two votes, mm -hmm. right? Does it conform to the policy or not? And then if it doesn't, second vote to determine should we change it anyway. Right. And there's there's two parts of the first part. Is the night mascot, does that comply with policy? And then you get to the name. Is the name Raiders, does that comply with policy? So it's it's a two part first question. So do we want to take them one at a time and do a straw poll tonight or do we feel that we need to come back and have a more in depth conversation that sets out a I don't know the word I'm looking for, but a rubric that has <laughs> definitive quote, like things that we can put things in as opposed to letting it be emotional. But, but I, I don't think I that we would be making an emotional decision, an emotional straw ball today. We don't have to say that this is the ultimate decision, but we could do it around that. We could just answer 3B mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. uh, just that one question, and this. that would be. Uh, so we're going to take the night and then the name separate. Like Chris suggested, how I, I, 
Yeah. I just I'm curious how there's any ambiguity about the term raider yeah. being <laughs> anything but yeah. offensive. Yeah, of like I just I don't I don't I'm struggling with that. I have been since the articles came out, since we received the letter, like and you know, as a parent attending sporting events at the school for a long time, you know, every time I hear it, I cringe. And, you know, we're competing against other schools where the mascot, sometimes there's a mascot, sometimes there isn't, but it's visceral on a routine basis. And it's, you know, we can look up the definition, but it was, you know, we know what the definition is, so I don't understand how there's any ambiguity on this about the name Raiders. And they, and like the students were saying, you know, the U is the symbol. There are occasions where there are people who show up at night aren't armor for sorting events and stuff, but it's, I know, it, it, it appears like, you haven't seen that? Not in my day, no. Oh, well, this is a contemporary. Wow. Yes, <laughs> it's, it, well, really, and you know, Willow mm -hmm. and her peers have put, there's a lot of school spirit right now um, at sporting events, and they are actively working on that as a department, and that comes up in the newsletters mm -hmm. as well, like, so, um, at, from a parent perspective, and also just understanding what the word Raiders means, I don't, I just don't understand why that, there's any question about that. It, it's, it's really problematic. And do we have so, to have so a name? Let's, like, let's do this. What about in the dangerous of time, too? And this is just a proposal. So the thing about the name Raiders, just like you said right now, so the Raiders, if we're looking at 3B, any person, group, or person, organization associated with the repression of others, if the question is yes, yeah, if, if you feel like yes, the name represents that, you know, raise your hand. Does mm -hmm. that make can sense? We, we, just as drop off. Read the entire definition. Okay, read, read the entire definition. Read the entire definition. And I'm just, so assist the school board in ensuring the prohibition of school branding that directly or indirectly references or stereotypes the likeness, features, symbols, traditions, or other characteristics that are specific to either, and I'm just going to go to B, mm -hmm. any person, group of persons, or organizations associated with the depression of others. So if you okay. feel that way, raise your hand. It's just a struggle. Okay, so I'm uh, just talking about is, the name. Yes. Can I make that issue? Yes. The name ahead. Raiders. The name Raiders. Because I think school branding covers both the knight the and the Raider, Raider yeah. Yeah. together. So, yeah. Just about. Yeah. So the name Raiders. It's like an or. Yeah. <laughs> Either or, mm -hmm. right, would cover branding. And so is the sense of the board that it's the violence and the impression that a Raider uh, embodies or the popular mm -hmm. vision of that is the problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So raising our hand if we feel that the name or symbol um, fits with this definition of being Discriminatory, or should be prohibited. Yes. I, I, I think I would like to stick with the definition, I, the, with the with the words that I just Chris just read and just answer that specific. And it's just a struggle. It's not a motion, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. just, you know, and and you can if you, we can even go this this or that <laughs> if that helps. So you know you could do if you guys are familiar with. That IBB, yeah. yeah. So if you feel like you're yes. okay with that middle, is that you're ambiguous and you can yeah. tell us why? No, and yes, you feel like you know this mm -hmm. represents oppression. So I, I don't want to count to three, but can you want to count to three? <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really sad to do this. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, Maybe I can't quite read Oh, that's it. Oh, it's sorry, just, I got okay. my pen. So, I'm just kind of. So, I have <laughs> one, two, three middle ones, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up. And Eric's a middle. And Eric's a middle. It looks like a middle. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's just a struggle. So, I, I, I feel like the majority of the board feels like, you know, it's, it's worth going deeper mm -hmm. into what that is. Uh, we don't know yet, but this will help us. If this, we could take a vote tonight if you, if you want. I don't know if that would be fair to our students yeah. and to our communities. Could, so I, could I ask if we could 
figure out what happens immediately after the motion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a thought. So uh, one of the things the board should uh, think about, and mm -hmm. this may be a reason to do the board, is um, on one hand, there isn't an, an, the timeline through which we take to make a change is ours to design. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you will have taken a vote that mm -hmm. something is discriminatory, and well, and you don't. You not said discriminatory. Well, you said repressive, yes. and that's right. That has a yeah. different connotation. Yeah. Well, um, and in mind that the policy literally says non-discriminatory yes. mascots. Yes. So. It, it, we, but we're not saying we did not vote and say that the mascot or the name is discriminatory. We were looking at its filing. So does it violate the policy? Yes. Yes. Regardless yes. of what yes. that is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so well, my point was, you might want to think about how quickly you might. It's kind of your question of what what happens after. Mm -hmm. I, one thing that we could do is bring to you to. A, a, a proposed outline for what would happen next after, um, which would have to do with what is the process. And there are schools that have done it quite successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, we can bring some different models of, here's how you go about making the change so that you can have that information when you um, take the vote. And I think for me that is, if you were to vote now, it, it oh. I guess it, I don't know. It, it, in some ways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really but, matter one way. You know, we, we are going to need to create a process, regardless, especially if the majority of the board feels like. Yeah, I am thinking and appreciating your yeah. comment about capacity. Capacity. <laughs> so, yeah. allowing us to come back and say, here's how we think, here's what we think would be a, a feasible and, and also fast enough process, given this conversation. And here's how we think. Here's what we think we would need to do to do it well. That's the other thing. And it might be helpful for you to have that information. I don't know that it would change your decision, though. So I think yeah, that's, and I, that's what I'm starting to say. I don't, I don't think that that would necessarily change our, our decision. Because if we make this decision right now, the time frame is, is ours. Because we are not in a constraint of having to respond to you know, a lawsuit or anything mm -hmm. like that. So it's, it's for us to decide how we want to move forward. Mm -hmm. Had we yeah. mentioned to the students whether or not we were making a decision on this today? We told them that they were just reporting to us tonight, mm -hmm. which is what mm -hmm. I was hoping. Mm -hmm. we were, so that's what I was just thinking. That was a straw ball and not a, I, you know, I never imagined that we would come so mm -hmm. rapidly. I feel like it's totally appropriate to yeah. um, not rush the decision, yeah. not take the, an action tonight, reflect on what's happened. Learn about the implications mm -hmm. of this decision, mm -hmm. yeah. and then, and then, you know, in a couple or four weeks, make, make that decision. And maybe hear from them again. I mean, mm -hmm. are they coming back together to think of alternate mascots or? That should, well, that would be a student-led process. Yeah, yeah. That, that'd be yeah. Student -led yeah, that, yeah. Be, yeah. yeah. Well, that yeah. they are student. Well, I right. would. I mean, I have. I want to go back with them and share this conversation, okay. and, yeah. and that's what I think is worthwhile. Their reaction to that and all of that, and, and then the process through which you go about changing it is a big mm -hmm. um, endeavor. And mm -hmm. so I think we, what we would do is give you a little bit of information about what that looks like. Yeah. And, and I don't think that we need to make that decision, you know, the first week of May or the third week mm -mm. of May. It could be, you know, it, we could see where that fits in the, in that work. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that in this regard, but it worries me for us to say, well, you know, whether or not we vote that it's discriminatory or repressive or whatever, we're going to push that down the road a little bit. So I'm a little concerned about having that. I mean, we agreed with this policy. We, you know, and we're doing great work around fleshing out what that looks like. But I am worried that if we did take a vote tonight, it's very clear uh, the majority feel this is this meets it's it uh, and so all I'm saying as a cautionary note for us to say we know our capacity is limited that that makes me nervous because how else do we paint I mean it's very easy to then paint other things that are capacity oh, and, and don't get me wrong when I said capacity is more what is the mm -hmm, best mm -hmm. process because we are involved no in I, I, I hear you for just so saying I think we can so we can make this meaningful part of what we're what we're, what we're doing right now 
I think I agree with Kari that we can reflect and not rush this. I think we're sending a strong message tonight anyways, just by this drop ball. I don't, I don't think that anybody would read mm -hmm. her message any different. I think we're having a strong and, you know, mm -hmm. not a strong react. We, we're being uh, honest and uh, taking a drop ball decision, not decision, but a drop ball mm -hmm. sign out with integrity to how we that is meaningful to the beliefs, the vision, and the mission of our school district, too, and in response to our policy. Natasha? Um, I appreciate wanting to have a process, um, but I also appreciate what you said, Diane, because I feel like if this was a blatant mm -hmm. <laughs> racist mascot, we wouldn't necessarily be saying, we can wait to figure, excuse me, to figure out a process and see what happens next. Like we would, I feel like we would make it more immediate. Um, and so, I I think that I think that that's a valid concern. Mm. That if it is in violation of the policy, if it is something that is repressive and oppressive, that should be just as much of a priority as if it was a blatant racist. Um, mm -hmm. I, I tend to agree. I also had a thought and pardon the football reference, but the other possibility is that, um, first of all, I think it would be good to help to give you some examples of what we think a thoughtful process mm -hmm. to rename would be and how long mm -hmm. it would take. Yeah. The Washington football team was the Washington football team for a year because they mm -hmm. needed to mm -hmm. end the yeah. discrimination part, but they mm -hmm. wanted to do a better job. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, debate whether or not they were successful in that, but... I don't we're not successful. <laughs> but, but, like, the point is, they were able to end the discriminatory piece and move quickly on that and not rush the, okay, but what should we be, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, sorry. I, just, we've talked about this for so long, I don't want to drag this out anymore, but... The, dis the discriminatory, the word discriminatory is at the beginning of the policy, and the complaints that were made were about sort of blatant Confederate imagery, um, indigenous imagery, whether you know flattering or not. Um, and the Raiders, which seems like that was generated by the controversy in Rutland, there, there are other mascot names in Vermont like marauders mm -hmm. right? or presidents for or that matter bears. that could be seen as mm -hmm. people who are in, in, in well that's the blatant confederate yes, image is. that I was referring to <laughs> okay. but there are, there, 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 there are other <laughs> violent names <laughs> right? and there are other the galloping ghosts Where? Randolph mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was like a hooded rider at one point <laughs> yeah, um, um, but what the way, where we're coming at this is not where the NAACP right, and the indigenous groups were coming from. I think that there's some consensus around the table, but I believe that this would be the first instance of, in the state where a name was changed not because we found that it was racially or ethnically discriminatory, but because the name itself was, was violent and indicated oppression, mm -hmm. right? So I just, just yeah. Kind yeah. Of putting that in the, in the, the statewide context of all this is coming out. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's our duty to. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying it's not. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. We can be put yeah. in that. Absolutely. I'm just saying this <laughs> yeah. is not something that anyone yeah. has made a complaint about. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that pejoratively. I'm just right. putting okay. that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does everybody feel okay where we are right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Oh, so we're never getting home today. Uh, approve 22-24 calendar. Yep. We can be really super quick. I think you can. The memo had some information about yep. how it's developed in case you needed that reminder. Um, Could I? Happy I'm, 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 I'm looking for a motion and then a, and then a second and then we will have discussion. Accept the calendar for the 2023 2024 school year. Thank you. Seconds. Yeah, Ursula, any discussion? Who seconded it? Ursula. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please. Um, sorry, can you repeat that? I, for some reason, I did not hear oh, any, the motion. I know, is that not by board? 
what, what was said by no I just asked if there was any discussion we're accepting the calendar Eric we we are okay. we are in three in six point two Okay, so it's not less than the calendar we're talking about right now. Right. Are right. we accepting the last day of school or are we accepting the 2024 20, calendar? The calendar. The calendar. The calendar. 6.2 calendar. Right. Sorry, thank you. All right. They're in a different mm -hmm. order in our packet. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay, now approve the last day of school, and that was, yeah. Page 26. Yeah. So it's 26. Could I have a motion and then we'll discuss? I, I can make a motion. You want the exact dates? Yes. Or? Okay. I make a motion to approve the recommendation for the last day of school for students to be Friday, June 16th, um, partial day of, for students, and for teachers, uh, Tuesday, June 20th, and also for ESP to be Tuesday, June 20th. Thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, gentlemen. Discussion. I just want to put on the record that I very much appreciate this school district recognizing Juneteenth because mm -hmm. I've argued with a number of school, other school boards about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you. Agreed. Thank you. All, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. We don't we go till the next round. Yeah. District mm -hmm. clerk. So you've mm -hmm. got in your packet and I'll bring my other thing out. It, you, you've got in your packet that Rosie resigned. So we want to acknowledge all you know how wonderful she's been for her district. She's been with us since we unified as not just the town of Beach Montpelier, but dealing with our own commingling. If she has been without an assistant clerk. We accept her resignation. We try to convince her to not leave us, <laughs> but she's got too much on her plate. So we respect that and we want to appreciate her. She couldn't join us tonight, but uh, we're going to make you for a little good certificate and something for her. We really appreciate it. And I want to make sure that, that was, she didn't want any public acknowledgement, but she's done a lot for us. So. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, uh, the process of how we, we consulted with the Secretary of State just to make sure that we didn't have to, you know, uh, file something with them and stuff. So what JP said is that we need to post. We What we're hoping to do is do similarly to what we do when we uh, have a vacancy on the board. So we're going to post a, in Front Bridge Forum in our website, in our newsletter. Uh, we have a, a little guidance of what the duties of the clerk are. And then we would, as a board, we would appoint somebody to be our district clerk until the next election with that person or whoever wants to run it will do it. Instead of like trying to just go and find one person, make it sort of more equitable and with equity around our, our, our towns and hope that either one of our clerks will want to do it or somebody else that it has to live in our district. So it can be clerk somewhere else, but the person has to. Our but it doesn't have to be a town clerk. It, it doesn't have to be a town clerk. It helps, but it doesn't have to be it a helps. town clerk. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. helps. Yes, mm -hmm. it helps. Yes, it helps. So, so that's the. But we, if you feel comfortable with that, it, I would take the responsibility with Megan to put something out, and then we will appoint together with the letter. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'd like to ask when either board members or a clerk resigns that we're notified as soon as you get the letter that it's shared with us because this was a month ago. Yeah, so here's the process, uh, Lindy. So they, we did not have all the answers. We were going to try to debrief with Lindy, with Lindy, with, no. uh, <laughs> with, with Rosie uh, that day. It was right after election. And I'll be frank, I was in denial that she was going to resign. We were trying to talk, with, you know, we were trying to talk with, uh, with her and also debrief the, the process. And we did not have all the answers. We had had a board meeting the Wednesday before we received the letter. 
So our next board meeting was our community engagement, and it was not until this week that we received information from the Secretary of State, too. So but it, that, but that she, was she sent the letter in March, is what she I was saying, that we, I think, as a board, we're all equal and should just be notified. When, just like if a board member sent you a, because we're all elected officials. Um, including yeah, and the I'm, clerk. Not, I'm not questioning that. I'm yeah. just like we, we did not have answers, and sometimes there, there's more questions than answers. But I'm happy to, if we get a resignation from the teacher, to send that right away. Okay. Well, I guess I guess that when you mention that, I mean it does address us in the heading. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be the only question. To me, this might be part of that. Um, maybe it becomes part of our retreat work where we we designate and kind of talk through some of those different things just for a better understanding of when communications come through what's the, the procedure sure. okay policy committee i think that appoint is a motion to formally appoint, appoint maggie. maggie so mm -hmm. i'm looking at for a motion to appoint maggie to the policy committee so mm -hmm. i move to appoint maggie Weiss to the policy committee second I think um, take your seniority required to go to our last meeting. So retroactive. Retroactive to the last meeting. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Chris and Natasha. Any discussion? Thank you, Maggie. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Finance Committee, here you are at the show. So, okay, who's to that? So, um, sorry. Okay. Do you have another blanket to share with other people? <laughs> 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 I'm sleeping so yet. So, <laughs> so, am I, just because of the I time, I don't want to, I don't want, could I have a motion? I move to approve the use of the capital fund reserve for EMES to pay for improvements to playground, fat and path, a hundred amount not to exceed $43,183. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you, Ursula. And now, uh, Alicia, would you mind sharing some of the writing? I'll just share a second grade piece. I was looking at these two weeks. So I put in the principal's report that every four weeks or so, we go on the writing prompt, and the last one I asked students, the prompt basically was, if you could add a piece of equipment or have more of something, what would it be? So kindergartners through grade six. I'll tell you first some of the doable changes. <laughs> <laughs> that Not so doable, but like a four square court, more slings is a big one. Mm. A cabin in the woods, because we used to have one. Mm. A covered shelter, some signs of playground rules. So there were really good suggestions that are totally doable. <laughs> We also had zip line, swimming pool, yes. hot tub, roller coaster. <laughs> that was the teachers, mind. I'm sure. Did we approve the hot tub in the board meeting? <laughs> <laughs> so on Friday, I intentionally did this meeting for Timothy to make sure it was going to go through. But on Friday, we're going to have an all school assembly celebration to end just before going into break. I'm going to share. Mm. what happens what happened tonight and also share some of their writing pieces to let them know that their voices truly do matter mm -hmm. and we do listen and I uh, want to take their feedback but this is just a second grade uh, student who said I think there should be a wheelchair accessible play structure and Braille people can get excluded because they can't play on the play structure if they want to that is when school oh, schools are meant to be welcoming to everybody, please let this happen, or else I will never give up, and I will never stop. I will protest at school. <laughs> and, um, as I shared with you, a huge reason for these changes are we need to make more of our playground accessible. Mm -hmm. Several students wrote about accessibility, mm -hmm. knowing some of their classmates and uh, kiddos at school, and um, but hers is very. Uh, not threatening, but very <laughs> <laughs> so powerful. powerful. So, thank you for sharing that. Mm. So, with that note, I don't know that we can top that. But all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carried. Mm. Okay. Oh. 
So Susan uh, is with us. I don't know if you want to give us any highlights or are there any questions for Susan in the quarterly financial report? Um, not about that, but I, I just noticed and without snark the letterhead on the on the forum uh, uh, about the EMES playground. That letterhead needs to be up. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jen, yes. 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 you don't mind. Yes. 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 I think every three or four meetings, just one memo should come in with her name. Just will be like a scavenger hunt. Test us. That's right. Thank you for that. So, or do you want to just talk to us about the fund balance uh, so that sure. we can form uh, that conversation? When the FY23 budget was prepared, the board had a plan to utilize fund balance to offset um, the expenditures in the amount of $325,468. Uh, the beginning fund balance started at $1,591,965. Um, and right now we're projecting uh, an increase in the fund balance, not a decrease, an increase of $57,438. Um, it's a combined effort between revenues increasing and expenditures in, uh, decreasing or coming in under budget. And so the potential increase in the fund balance uh, brings the amount beyond the 2% target to $926,017. So it's a, it's a good forecast. <laughs> so the, 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 the finance, if you have any input, the finance committee is going to be taking this on, on their next meeting too, um, but we wanted you to be aware of the, the front box. Yeah. Okay. Policy committee. Okay. The policy for consideration and adoption. First is a, uh, a C5 weapons and firearms. And uh, we hopefully comply with Ursula, uh, Ursula's command that we track the changes in the policy, which was a great suggestion because it's really helpful. I appreciate it. It's helpful. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. And um, I would point out that uh, we added on a, um, a reporting uh, requirement so that the uh, suspensions that were dealing with a uh, violation of the policy that weren't coming to the board uh, would be. Um, Told to the board and described why, uh, so that we were more informed about the the level of violation that did not come up to board for expulsion pur purposes. And so that that's the highlights for C five. Any questions on C five? Where is the report? So it's, it's at the at end. The very last. Yep. Where it says policy implementation, the yep. last paragraph there. And it's going to show up as bold, not red, because it's new, as opposed to crossed out, which might be why it's hard to find. It's basically, it says, the superintendent shall, pro shall provide an annual report to the board of violations of this policy, including, but not limited to, the following information. Total number of violations, total number of violations that did not warrant a hearing, and the nature of the reasons for those violations not being recommended. Is there, is there a motion to approve C5? I move that we approve policy C5. Second. Oh, okay. those in favor? Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, discussion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, um, is that we're now saying that folding knives with blades less than two and a half inches may be possessed if they are not used in a threatening manner or with intent to cause harm? That's a great question. They are still prohibited. And there would still, the administration, just, okay. exactly, they would still use our discipline procedures process to, to uh, institute progressive discipline. So they are still prohibited. The difference is it doesn't require an immediate board expulsion hearing because we are allowed to let intent be part of that. Yeah. And are there other 
other changes like that in, in here? I'm sorry if I haven't read it closely enough. I think that's the primary one. Okay. So. Any other questions? Well, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And this is another example of Daniel, how you're saying, you know, so that the mm -hmm. procedure next to it would mm -hmm. highlight there is still the disciplinary, mm -hmm. there's still the student handbook issues that are so, take precedence. So just to, historically, we've had lots of discussion about where the procedure should go, mm -hmm. uh, and we've always been told that it would make the policy too long, but I tend to agree the policy the procedure should be coupled with the policy rather than have to hunt in a different spot. So mm -hmm. we will work on that mm -hmm. coming up, just to ease, you know, mm -hmm. ease the present. Mm -hmm. Why can't there just be a hyperlink? Like, why is it? That's sort of where, text, it, right? where we where were. That's where the manual would awesome. be alongside of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So next up is um, an E20 change just to clarify that um, when there are municipal elections held, mm -hmm. then the principal cannot close the school um, on an election day, even if it's bad weather, whatever, because the election has been scheduled and that, that would take precedence. So it's basically mm -hmm. just a workaround, taking a little bit of authority away from the principal to close the school on that particular To close day. the building. But the there building may not be students in right, the school. Right. Okay. Questions? Jonas? I'm just going to move. That one is just a second reading, or is that one? The second reading and adoption. Can be adopted. Okay. Yes. So, go ahead, Jonas. I move uh, to adopt uh, policy. Second. Moved by Jonas, second by Ursula. Any discussion? Any more discussion? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. Let's move to the consent agenda, right? Did I get the one? Yes. I move to approve the minutes of March 15th, March 29th, and April 5th, 2023. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Natasha. Any discussion? Any changes? Seeing none, please signify by, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um. Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. A board orders. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the board order for the period 316.23 through 419.23 in the total amount of 893 thousand nine hundred fifty eight dollars eighteen cents thank you Linda. second thank you for that have we had a any, yeah. any questions we did not bring that so we're gonna have to yeah. are we gonna do send an email so send an email think about yeah i forgot to remind you do you have it no let me see no no i forgot to <laughs> yeah. that. sorry yeah i'll send you an, an email before we Tonight. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. So personnel. Page 54. Yeah. There's a lot of them. And, yeah. To the left, we burn lens. Where's the want to do it? Or oh, you want me to do it? Sure. Um, I move that we approve the new hire nominations for 2023 of Sarah Cousins, speech language pathologist at Berlin. Second. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. So, okay. Oh, that was Mike. Okay. She's great. Lucky. Um, it says for 2022-23. Is it 23-24? So or is it next year? Good catch. The vacancy exists, which is why it says 22-23, but she is beginning next year. 23-24. So the motion's amended for 23-24. Do you agree, Maggie? 
Do you agree yeah. with that amendment? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. moved by Ursula, second by Maggie. Uh, we're accepting uh, Sarah Cousins as speech language pathologist. All those in favor, please. Wait, uh, wait. Oh. One little bit of discussion. More Aussies. Always more Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you, Michael. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I see. Hi, Mr. Sherwin. <laughs> oh, good day, mate. <laughs> All those in favor of signifying by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. I move. Rehires. Yeah. Go ahead. I move that we approve the following rehires Olga Benoit, U32 math interventionist, Lindsay Wright, U32 social studies teacher, Karen Chesser, Berlin school counselor, Nancy Robinson, Berlin health teacher. Annalisa Kirby, Berlin Special Education Teacher, Uriah Proctor Mattingly, Callis Schoolwide Student Support Services. And is that for next year? Yes. So awesome. Okay. Ursula move and Natasha. Natasha. I have a quick question. Yeah. Is there a reason why salaries were not listed on several of them? I'm just wondering. Or covered. Yeah. They are rehires, so I do not know. There was like a Good sticky question. note on one mm -hmm. Yes. They will, they will Maybe be because they rehired just have at a step yeah. level that the Could be. contract. Oh, that's true. That it yeah. might be. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Second small question. Yes. Which of the elementary schools have health teachers? Uh, so, Jen, do you want to? Health education is provided by a number of people. In which elementary schools is health delivered by a health ed teacher? Um, Callis is a certified health educator. Romney is a certified health educator. Berlin is a certified health educator. And in the other schools, the curriculum is delivered by other people, licensed, qualified to do so. But yeah. U32. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Next one. I move that we approve the long term substitutes for the 2022 20, 20, 2023 year. That is actually accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. There right now. Yep. Richard Terrian, LTS Music, U32. Clarissa Gold, LTS Science, U32. And Aiden Mayer, LTS Physical Education slash Health, U32. Thank you, Ursula. A second? Okay. Chris? Okay. Any discussion? Chris. Hearing none. Chris. All, those, Chris. all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Future agenda items. We should look at our work plan and do. Yeah. I can actually put it on screen. Hold on, I'll do that. So, I, what I would say is. Um, our next immediate meeting is the community <coughs> forum, which will be one of a, one of the engagement sessions for strategic planning. Um, so the format and structure, and potentially even the location of that, may vary. That group is meeting tomorrow to plan what that looks like. Um, and then the one thought that I had for is we'll want to add the action item around mascots on the twenty fourth. To give some time for me to give you some information about what that process might look like, so I'll add that. So. Sure. Okay. And then our, our agenda is uh, our steering committee. We will look. We always look at the agenda, and you know there might be more things you know, to add, and also the strategic plan. Uh, we should also inform mm -hmm. yes. our agenda, and there yep. will be a report on that, on that too. Um, okay. Any board reflections? 
I move to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiation strategy to include Megan Roy and Suzanne Gann. Second. And is it possible to move to another room? He's in the room. He's in the room. Okay, he's in the room. Okay. Okay, you're recording now? Yeah, yes. I have been. Okay, I move to authorize Board Chair yeah, Flora Diaz Smith to okay. engage in negotiations with Superintendent Megan Roy for an extended contract with the understanding that the final product will be presented to the Board for final approval. Second. Thank you. Jonas, thank you, Daniel. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Daniel, and second by Ursula. Sure. Unanimously. All those in favor, please signify by leave.